thanks everyone for coming. Um, yes, so tonight's BCAT Cinema Series, as Chris said, Martin Scorsese's 1990 movie Goodfellas, which is actually based on the 1985 book by Nicholas Pileggi called Wise Guy. Uh, this is the story of, this is the true life story of Henry Hill, who was born in 1943 in Brooklyn, New York, to an Irish American father and a Sicilian American mother, who at a young age became associated with the Lucchese crime family and remained in that organization until his arrest on narcotics trafficking charges in 1980, after which he became a high valued informant and was entered into the witness protection program. Uh, there's one thing I want to talk about this story uh, today, and that is. The, I think a lot of it is about the importance of place. Uh, what I mean by that is it's how a person can subtly shape their surroundings, but more importantly, how a place can fundamentally set a person on their life's path. Hill was not born into a life of a gangster. His parents were not associated with crime, and it was only through observing the men in fancy suits waving wads of money around that Hill became intrigued by the life, wise guy life. His ability to enter that life was also due to the place of his childhood. His family apartment was across the street from a cab stand owned by Lucchese crime boss, boss Paul Vario, portrayed in the film as Polly Cicero. Hill started working at the cab stand as an afternoon job. Most kids would work del delivering newspapers or working in a shop, but Hill spent his time running errands for gangsters and parking their cars. He began to learn the ins and outs of petty crime, but more importantly started to find his place within the group and the world of organized crime. Even when he tried to change his surroundings, the ways of his upbringing came with him. He joined the army in 1960, not coincidentally while the Senate was doing an investigation into organized crime, but even there he could not escape. He both kept his contact in the mafia and brought his penchant for scams, theft, and other crimes into the barracks. Even in prison, Hill found his place as a member of, an, of, of organized crime. Rather than serving time with the general population, he was able to maneuver his way into private cells with other gangsters. He was even able to smuggle in contraband to support his lifestyle and provide money for his family. No matter where he went, Hill was always, in some way, back in the old neighborhood, and he would bring that old neighborhood wherever he went. After he entered into the witness protection program, he was finally out of place, and it showed. He was restless, couldn't give up drinking and drugs, and would inev inevitably reveal his true ident identity to his neighbors, and therefore force the federal marshals to move him somewhere else. Eventually, they dropped him entirely from the program to fend for himself, which he did for a while before dying of heart problems in 2012. I'm not saying that Hill was destined from childhood to be a gangster, that his upbringing trapped him in his life. But it did make a life of crime possible, and once he was accepted into the family, the people he considered his true family, he could never be at home in any other place or circumstance. We must keep in mind that no matter how glamorous the Hill character makes the gangster lifestyle seem, this is a story about bad people making bad choices for selfish and short-sighted reasons. It is a story of violent antagonists portraying the lives of thieves, wife abusers, and murderers. Sure, they in some way may have been molded by their environments, but they also made the active choice to make their environments, their place, much worse for everyone around them. All right, so now we can get to some fun facts of the movie. So the budget was $25 million, which while it was Scorsese's biggest up to that time, it was an average for, you know, movies uh, you know, in that era. It turned out to be a good investment for Warner Brothers, the studio behind it, as it grossed over $46 million. It received positive reviews from critics and was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, with Pesci winning Best Actor in a Supporting Role. The film won five awards from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, including Best Film and Best Director. Additionally, Goodfellows was named the year's best film by various critics, group, critics groups. Famed film critic Roger Ebert named Goodfellows the best mob movie ever, even better than The Godfather, and placed it among the best films of the 1990s. The movie was originally set to begin taping a couple years earlier, but filming was postponed because Scorsese received funds to make The Last Temptation of, the Christ, of, the Last Temptation of Christ first. However, as someone interested in the mob lifestyle, Scorsese was set on returning on to the project and began casting actors for the many roles. Originally, Ray Liotta, who plays Henry Hill, was not going to be picked for that role. The studio wanted someone with more name recognition and even put out the idea of casting Tom Cruise for the role of Henry Hill. <laughs> Would have been a different experience, I think. 
However, Robert De Niro was impressed by, uh, by Leota and his work in the 1986 film Something Wild and pushed for him. Leota, who had read the book and was fascinated by it, jumped at the chance to audition. He later joked about having to convince the studio he was, the right, he was right for the role, saying, I think they would have rather had Eddie Murphy than me. Also would have been a different type of movie. Um, the movie also has some interesting cameos. Both of Scorsese's parents are in the film. His mom, Catherine, plays Joe Pesci's character's mother, while his father, Charles, plays Vinny, the old mobster whom Polly warns about putting too many onions in the tomato sauce in the prison dinner scene. There were also some real-life criminals turned actors in the movie. Most famous is Tony Sirico, who plays Tony Stax. Sirico is best known for his role as Polly Walnut's Gaultieri in The Sopranos. Probably recognize his face. Almost done. Um, there's also some interesting history behind some of the movie's most iconic scenes. The long tracking shot through the Copacabana nightclub came about because of a practical problem. The filmmakers could not get permission to go in the short way, and this forced them to go around the back. Scorsese decided to film the sequence in one unbroken shot in order to symbolize that Henry's entire life was ahead of him, commenting, quote, it's his seduction of Karen, and it's also the lifestyle seducing him. The sequence was shot eight times. Perhaps the most famous and off-quoted scene of the movie is the interaction between Hill and Tommy DeVito, played by Joe Pesci. This is the funny, funny how, do I amuse you? Am I a clown here for your entertainment scene? This scene was actually based on a real-life incident that happened to Pesci. As a young man, he was working at a restaurant and told the mobster he was funny. The mobster reacted in much the same way as depicted in the movie. To make the scene feel even more awkward and realistic, Scorsese didn't include it in the shooting script, so that Pesci and Leota's interaction would elicit genuine surprise reactions from the supporting cast. The film also set the stage for one of the shortest acceptance speeches of all time. Pesci was very surprised to win the Academy Award for Best Actor in a Supporting Role and did not, had not prepared any remarks. After his name was called, he went on the stage and just uttered five words. It's my privilege. Thank you. Now, something we've got to talk about in this movie, and that's the language of the movie, uh, most notably the bad language in the movie. To keep the dialogue true to life, Scorsese was liberal with swearing, especially the F word. However, it was actually the cast that brought the number of F-bombs up from enough to make it one of the most profanity-laced movies of the time. The script called for 70 instances of the word, but while improvising, the actors used it 300 times, and half of them, or roughly half of them, were by, by Pesci's character. <laughs> Finally, a couple of distinctions between the movie and real life. Henry Hill was involved in so many scams and other endeavors that they couldn't all be depicted in the movie. He was involved in a point-fixing scheme with a couple of Boston College basketball players. Some of the names of the gangsters were changed. In a couple of cases, some of the, uh, their attributes were, uh, were altered. For instance, mob boss Paul Cicero, who in real life was Paul Vario, was not the calm man depicted in the movie. He had a bad temper and could quickly flip into violence. And Robert De Niro's character, Jimmy Conway, is portrayed as a smooth but is as a smooth character, but in real life, Hill said the man behind the character, Jimmy Burke, was a homicidal maniac responsible for between 50 and 60 murders. However, after seeing the film, the real-life Henry Hill said he thought the movie was about 95% accurate.